Now, I would like to introduce Lori Murray, who is Assistant Professor of English and Creative Writing at Bryan College in Tennessee. Now, Lori was facilitating our Nature Journal group here at the Visitor Center, and that was shut down because of the pandemic. Uh, but she has continued to do nature journaling as a daily practice, and she's been doing that for about a couple of years now and has worked with many groups sharing her uh, knowledge and talent. So welcome, Lori, and let's get you started. Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. All right, that's awesome. And um, I'm not sure, when do I start to share the screen? Just you can go ahead. Issue here. So just click on that mm -hmm. and share. All right. Can't see my little... Oh. You, yep, you just have to put it in the presentation mode and... Okay, there we go. All right. You are set. All right, thank you so much. Well, it's wonderful to be um, here this evening. i am um, been looking forward to this opportunity and um, I've been back in Maine for a couple weeks now and uh, still a Maine resident, at least for about six more weeks. So uh, tonight we're gonna be talking about the power um, of observation and noticing change. Um, when we do um, notice change, um, when we're out in nature and when we're observing, um, it has the power to really um, move us and affect us. And um, as we watch nature um, and see the, the nature happenings that go on. Uh, for example, when I was in Tennessee through the months of January, um, February, March, and April, these are just some of the little things that I noticed that being someone who's loved nature for more than 60 years. I've been, my grandmother told me that I loved nature when I was three, but I'm always attuned to what's going on in the natural world. For example, um, I saw thousands of sandhill cranes uh, take flight uh, over the Tennessee River Valley um, that took flight right from the um, Hiwassee Nature Refuge. Uh, and it was right at sunrise. It was a beautiful sight. I saw my first American kestrel, uh, which is a small falcon. Um, it was sitting on an electrical line over Route 60, um, just uh, north of the, um, the bridge that spans the Tennessee River. Um, additionally, I saw a, uh, a very small baby painted turtle in the yard of the bed and breakfast that I was staying at in uh, Udawa, Tennessee. And that little turtle was so small. I also saw a pair of coyotes uh, that were sitting side by side along a fence row um, as the sun was setting in Meigs County, Tennessee. What surprised me about all of that was is the vast amount of wildlife in the state of Tennessee and um, it really helped me to fall in love with a place that I'm going to go back to and teach. It also helped me to understand a new migratory route that I didn't know about. It's the migratory route of these sandhill cranes. But I was eager to come back to Maine. And one of the things that I did the very next day was that I returned um, to Owl's Head State Park. That's one of my favorite uh, parks. I go there over and over again. My first day there, I didn't see any um, uh, seabirds whatsoever. I didn't see any birds and I was very surprised. But two days later, I saw two common, or excuse me, 12 common eiders, uh, loons, double-crested cormorants. I saw um, ospreys and also a harbor seal. So um, as we go through this presentation, think about how nature um, changes itself, but how nature and viewing nature, observing nature and nature journaling also can change us. Um, what you're viewing on your screen right now is just um, a collage of um, nature sightings that I had uh, in the month of February in Tennessee. Um, some of the art students at the school asked me if I would do a drawing for their um, uh, for their art art exhibit and gala night that they had. 
So as you can see, there's a lot of different things. We had a, uh, there was a cricket frog, um, there was a freshwater clam. I made an attempt at a sandhill crane. Um, I saw river otter tracks. Um, there was a red-headed woodpecker in a tree. I saw, saw a northern water snake as well. So um, there's just all types of things going on. One of the first things to keep in mind as um, you record your na nature observations is to decide how you're going to go about that. What type of maybe um, nature journal you might want to use. Um, are you going to do quick gestures? Are you going to spend more time? Um, are you going to use watercolor, maybe colored pencils? Are you going to include any photography, prose, or poetry? My students asked me if I would put a little poem on mine, and so I did. I'm not a poet. I do write lyric essays, but I included a little poem on, on, on mine. And most of the time, I do have written text on my nature journal pages. So um, it's good to keep, um, you know, however you want to set up your nature journal page to reflect what you're seeing, what you're observing, uh, will help you to remember. It also helps you to focus in and learn. And we're going to be talking more about that. Uh, one of the things that I have done in the past is that I read about uh, changes in nature. For example, Henry David Thoreau's book, Cape Cod. Uh, currently, I'm rereading The Outermost House um, by Henry Beston. And my students, I had them read um, Robert Finch's uh, The Primal Place. That's all about changes that are transpiring on the place of Cape Cod. And so I thought it would be a good place for me as a nature journalist to start to as well. One of the things that we can ask ourselves before we go out in, uh, into the field nature journey, it, nature journaling, excuse me, is to um, maybe either plan um, a nature journaling experience or maybe we want just to um, maybe have nature come to us, which often does happen. Um, maybe we can think of, um, you know, a specific place. One day I know that uh, it was last um, year in April when we were all, um, you know, we couldn't be, uh, we had to be socially distant. So one day I just took a drive and went to um, St. George Peninsula. And what I saw was an Eastern painted turtle, common merganser. I saw red winged blackbirds, um, Canada geese, um, black ducks, double crested cormorants the eiders and the robins. And so here is uh, just a view of one of my nature journal pages and the things that I saw. I didn't really know what I was gonna see that day. It's just, I was in the car, I didn't even get out. And these are the different types of birds that I wanted to take note of. One of the things you might take note of too yourself is that I usually uh, put the temperature sometimes I'll put clouds or um, maybe a little sun um, marking here. Um, I almost always put the date and the geographical location as well. So where can we observe nature? Um, we can observe while we're in meadows, fields, forests, mountains, marshes, maybe along streams and lakes and rivers, and of course the ocean here in Maine. I have nature journaled from ski lifts, from schooners, from cars, from um, cabin porches. I've uh, done nature journaling in my own backyard, looking out the window of my apartment. Um, also, I've done nature journaling through the lens of a camera, a webcam, um, and uh, collecting nature specimens too as well. Um, the one photo here you can see is a, um, a nature drawing from one of my nature journal um, journals of a, um, uh, a herring gull. And um, this herring gull likes to hang out at um, uh, Camden Harbor. And uh, some of the, um, the schooner captains told me that they named it Myrtle. Whether it's the same gull, I don't know, but anytime I'd go to the harbor, this bird seemed to be attracted to me. And over 
um, a period of about two years, whenever I would go to the harbor, there would be Myrtle. So I've worked on a lot of sketches of Myrtle, taking photos of Myrtle. And so um, just wanted to capture those moments. Um, another uh, type of a bird that I, that I um, included in my nature journal page was a northern gannet. And I have seen northern gannets on wildlife programs, um, um, birding, um, television programs or documentaries, but I had never actually seen one. And I was on Monhegan Island, specifically went there birding in September of 2019. I met a friend that um, she and I met through a nature journal club. She was from another state. And we had um, hiked along the coast for a while. We sat down to eat some lunch and I just happened to look up and above me was a northern gannet. And I was thrilled to be able to see that for the first time. And so um, I captured that image right there. It was raining, um, the wind was blowing, but I really wanted to capture um, this image of that northern gannet. Uh, this is another experience that I had. I did this um, journal page in about maybe 30 minutes um, or so. This is one of my first works. And it was um, just a small uh, pond uh, on the side of the road in Hope, Maine. And uh, one of the things that I noticed was the insects um, that day, um, you know, and I was trying to learn how to identify the, um, what I was seeing. Um, and the one, it's kind of hard to say whether it's right or left uh, when I'm viewing it through the screen, so I apologize. But one of the things that I did write down was all the types of vegetation, the flora that I was seeing, and uh, sometimes the shapes of different things really made, um, stood out to me and made a difference. And so I decided to um, record those um, little things in my nature journal pages. The next uh, slide here is um, last uh, December, I went to a cabin in Northwestern Pennsylvania at Parker Dam State Park. And um, it just so happened the day before I arrived that they had 40 inches of snow it was the second largest snowfall on record. I was hoping to hike in, in the snow, but it was so deep that it was really difficult. So as you can see, I wanted to capture that image. I wanted to capture that experience. I also wanted to record it um, because of the, the, the nature um, aspect of it too. Um, as you can see, there was a chickadee. I had brought some seeds to feed the birds and was given permission to be able to do that there and wrote a little narrative on the side about that experience because I wanted to remember it. I also wanted to remember the, the colors that day. Um, another way that you can um, maybe practice nature journaling, um, you know, for when you're really in the field, but you want to maybe brush up on your techniques, or maybe it's a rainy day or a windy day or way too much snow or cold. One of the things that you can do is nature journal through using um, webcams. This is explore.org. And um, it's the Brooks Falls region at, at Katmaya National Park in Alaska. And I had never, um, drawn or watercolored a bear before. And so I watched one of the videos that was just called meditation. And what I wanted to do was to capture the experiences of what the bear was doing. Now I did not identify my bear correctly. Um, I have written down in my journal that it's a grizzly when actually it's a, a brown bear. And so sometimes, you know, when we're nature journaling, we make mistakes, we misspell. And here I am an English uh, professor and I sometimes misspell or don't have great sentence structure in my, um, in my nature journal. But you know, um, oftentimes our nature journals are just for our eyes only. I just happen to be sharing mine with, with you today. But one of the most exciting things for me was to be able to watch these, watch these bears 
fishing, watching the cubs, this whole family and the interaction that was going on. Uh, this is another uh, a feeder watch cam, a webcam uh, from Ontario, Canada. And this was, I believe in the, it was definitely in the winter. And I was watching to see what types of birds in this particular um, week um, were there in Ontario. And so as you can see, there was crows, black cap chickadees, uh, lots of evening grosbeaks. I wanted to take note of what these, um, you know, what the birds were feeding on, what they were doing. For example, the crow, um, it appeared stiff legged and it was awkward when it walked. Um, the uh, finches like to feed on the ground. Uh, the gross beaks, they like to eat from the tray feeder. So it's all these little things that you can take note of when you're in the field or when you're watching um, a webcam such as this. Also too, um, maybe you want to um, bring specimens um, home with you, make sure that they're legal specimens. You can't always just snag stuff um, when you're out in nature. Some things, you know, you're not supposed to do that. So you do have to be careful and know what you can and cannot uh, retrieve from nature. Um, this particular um, slide reveals or shows that uh, these are some leaves that um, had fallen. And so it was something I knew I could gather from the field. And it was one of my first nature journal uh, pages that I did. And what I really wanted to do was capture that subject. I wanted to look at the various um, shapes of the leaves. I wanted to see the tones, the hues. I wanted to see whether or not um, how many, um, you know, parts were on the leaves. And so um, it was really a fun project to do. This one I just did a couple days ago. Um, I went to um, Owl's Head Harbor and I, um, the sun was starting to set and I was, um, you know, I saw all of these um, shells on, on, the, on the beach there and the cobblestones. And so I just decided to retrieve some of them, bring them back home because I knew that, that it was gonna be raining and it was a project that I could do on a rainy day. But, um, the, you know, one of the things that I have learned about nature journaling is take note of the shapes, the textures, um, maybe missing parts of, um, you know, of, of your specimens that you bring home. Um, the various, um, you know, nicks or dings or whatever too, um, and learn to try to identify the various things that you bring home. I didn't have time to do a lot of writing with this one or I would have finished writing my names on, on there of my specimens, but I wanted to get this on the PowerPoint for today. But as you can see, when you um, really pay attention to these types of things, you can record these and maybe down the road after you have nature journaled for a couple years, you may notice some changes or differences, or even when you retrieve the same species from a different location, you definitely might notice some differences. This is another um, specimens that I collected. This was one of my first ones. And they were all things that I was, you know, permitted to gather in the field. And what I did was first just lay them out on a tray. And then I sort of positioned them on the page where I wanted them to be. And then um, really tried to take note and identify what they were. If I have anything wrong, I'm, I'm willing to be corrected. <laughs> That's for sure. So one of the things that we need to keep in mind in uh, when we are nature journaling and um, in the field is to remember that in our natural world, it's not static, um, but it's dynamic, constantly changing. Um, something's always happening in nature. Um, the uh, changes can be seasonal. And for me as a nature journaling, uh, journalists doing this only a couple years, that's probably the most significant changes that I have recognized was those seasonal changes at this point. Um, it might be um, colors, colors of 
um, that'll just catch your eye. For example, um, I was at a lake house on Toddy Pond and it was just the various shades of blue. And I'm gonna be showing you more of the um, ice, ice out, the thaw. Um, it was in March of 2000, I think 19, I'm not sure. Um, but the varying shades of blue that were, um, um, you know, across the ice. And uh, then there was a butterfly and I, that, I just took that photo and I actually did several nature journal pages from the, the photograph of that. Um, I took a close up of that butterfly with my, my, just my cell phone and was able to capture that. And so when I took it home and was able to look at the various parts um, of that butterfly, um, I, you know, I learned a lot from that. Um, the next thing is I wanted to share was about natural disasters. Um, natural disasters, um, major shifts, sometimes there's whole, whole ecosystems um, that might collapse. Um, and, you know, I know that in different parts of the country, various types of disasters take place. We have we have hurricanes here um, on the coast of Maine. We haven't had a major one for a while, but in uh, 2008, I had the privilege of spending a day with a Passamaguady Native American. Um, I hired her for a private tour. In the morning, we went to the intertidal zone at Lubeck, and then the afternoon, we went to West Quaddy um, Bog. And so in the morning when we were doing um, the intertidal zone, she began to explain to me the um, there were some certain trees that were down and she related that to a hurricane that had happened and how the coastline was totally different than it had been in previous years. Um, also two uh, types of changes that you might notice uh, would be weather related. Um, I don't know if I have that one written on my screen or not, but weather related may be due to erosion um, along beaches um, or even streams, um, streams or rivers. I remember that when I was um, very young, um, maybe in my 20s, that um, I would frequent um, a place that uh, was owned by a family member and walking along that stream bed. And then one time um, there was a major rainfall. And what happened was is that um, little stream flooded and the whole course of that little stream changed. But what happened after that was the mink and the weasel, this was in Northwestern Pennsylvania, um, was that the mink and the weasel began to, to move into that area. So it was interesting to, to find that out. Um, other changes that we might take note of are human encroachment or human development, people moving in and out of a place. One of the places that I've noticed that a lot is um, in North Carolina um, above uh, Charlotte. My aunt lives in uh, near Cornelius and um, the housing development area um, is really just rapidly increasing every time I visit her. And I have seen whole fields and whole forest areas just decimated. And, you know, my first thought is somebody who loves nature is, you know, where's the wildlife going? How has this changed them and their patterns? And so uh, that's something that you could nature journal um, and keep track of. And then as Carney talked about the uh, climate change, and we know that, um, that uh, you know, the world is making, uh, is changing, um, and some places are more affected than others right now, but if you nature journal for a while and keep track of certain um, things in nature, you'll begin to take note of what's going on and, um, the you know, what's happening um, as far as climate, the climate change. Um, this is just a, some photos of some, some seasonal differences that um, you know, we had um, in this previous slide, we had, you know, er, very early spring. It actually wasn't spring yet. Uh, we had summer, we have autumn, fall, we have winter. Here in Maine, we're privileged to have all four seasons. So we have just a lot of change happening constantly. Um, let me see here. Um, this is, um, 
I did this uh, nature journaling uh, just uh, what five six days ago. Um, I went out to um, Muskeg Marsh. It's one of the places that I love to go. I love to note the colors, the changes, the birds that are migrating. Um, I, I was a little late, I think, with uh, with the spring migration, or maybe I was too busy and didn't catch some of the birds or something. But the day that I went there, um, you know, there was a, there was a great blue heron. There was some uh, short billed dowitchers. Um, there was about I think twelve or more uh, swallows. There was a mallard, um, you know, hen on the nest, um, and then there was a pair of killdeers that was there. And I had never seen killdeers at um, at Whiskey Marsh, and so I wanted to really focus in in my nature journal page on the the killdeer. That's why I put it front and center. Was that I wanted to remember that experience. And um, for me, I've been going there for a couple of years now, and this was the first time I had ever seen them. So um, this is just a photo of Whiskey Marsh uh, during autumn, and I just absolutely love the colors. Um, I have several nature journal pages that, um, you know, of the the you know the the birds, um, different various species of birds here in Muskegon Marsh um, in the autumn light. It's it's stunningly gorgeous. Uh, one of the things that you can do to prepare before you go into the the field for nature journaling, and to be aware of what type of maybe plants, insects. Um, birds you're going to see, mammals you're going to see, reptiles you're going to see, you know, uh, use field guides. That's what I do. When I went to the state of Tennessee, uh, one of the first, first things I did was the bed and breakfast I was staying at. I asked the host, do you have a Tennessee field guide? And uh, here I have some for, for Eastern uh, United, the Eastern United States. Um, and as soon as I arrived, I got a main birding uh, trail book native plants for New England. So use field guides, use them, you know, maybe to prepare before you go into the field, um, what you could expect, what types of, um, you know, wildlife, nature encounters you may have. Uh, also too, apps. I use uh, apps, Merlin Bird ID from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Uh, I really like eBird, um, the Audubon Bird Guide and iNaturalist. I'm sure there's lots of others, but we can only put so many on our phone at the same time. I also do online research, regional research, state research before I go into a place um, as far as nature, what's going on in nature. Like before I went to Tennessee, I really wasn't paying attention to the Sandhill crane population. And, and, and when I found out that I was going exactly to the place where um, up to 89,000 Sandhill cranes fly over um, between November 1st and February, the last day in February, um, oftentimes there's about 20,000 that winter there. And so I was thrilled to find that out. But how I found out was is through the online research from the Tennessee Wildlife um, Resources Agency. So, you know, before you go into the field, maybe that's something that you want to do too as well. Let me uh, just kind of catch up here. Uh, the next thing is about what's called a sit spot. Um, hopefully some of you have heard of a sit spot before. Um, I have uh, taken a course with um, Liz Clayton uh, Fuller, a naturalist and um, writer and a nature journalist. Um, she um, has a course on um, Bird Academy called Nature Journaling and Field Sketching. Uh, she recommends a sit spot, as does the instructors from the Natural History Illustrations 101 course that I've gone through multiple times. The uh, instructors there, um, this is through the University of Newcastle in Australia. Um, John Muir Laws, who is an author and um, who's one of the most well-known nature journalists, recommends sit spots as does Claire Walker uh, Leslie, who is a writer speaker, has wonderful books out there about nature journaling. All of them recommend a sit spot. And I know from personal experience 
how important it is when you go into the field and you want to observe nature to enter that space quietly and then find a place to sit down. When you first go into the place in nature, um, oftentimes um, birds, um, little mammals, they'll start to scatter, big mammals even scatter. Um, but if you sit there quietly, you'll notice that within um, five to seven minutes, sometimes it's less than that. It seems like the natural world, everything will return to just the same before you sit down. Um, the one picture is me um, sitting on a cliff in Penobscot Bay. I know one of my family members is here today um, on this Zoom call. And so she's finally getting to see her sister kind of hanging out over a cliff. Uh, the other one is at Toddy Pond um, uh, in uh, Surrey and here in Maine. And I have gone there many times. Uh, that day I was actually bundled up with about five or six layers on but I was really intent and in sitting there for several hours to Nature Journal and to see what type of changes that I could see, things that I had never experienced that type of a um, before, that type of a, um, um, you know, experience. Um, also too, a sit spot, we maybe could uh, sit at a picnic table. I've certainly done that before um, out our window of our apartment, our house. Um, have your sit spot right there, somewhere where it's comfortable, dry or warm, right in your own home. Next, you would want to um, select your subject for observation. Um, and when you do that, um, consider, you know, what you want to look at, um, what your field of view is. Do you want to have, um, uh, you know, a broad view? For example, this is a Blue Baron um, uh, Baron um, near Appleton. And, uh, you know, I've seen uh, white tailed deer uh, passing through here and also lots of turkeys, um, wild turkeys, big flocks of turkeys here in this area. Or maybe you want to focus in on the, the you know, the, the smaller level, that micro level, and you want a nature journal, something that's smaller, the more intricate details. So oftentimes in my nature journal pages, I'll have a landscape view. And then what I'll do is I'll put a smaller um, object or something in nature on the page. Maybe, uh, you know, when you're at the intertidal zone, you wanna focus in on, you know, what's going on in that intertidal zone. I've, I've nature journaled, uh, things like that. Maybe uh, you wanna do a nature journal page about, uh, a small family of Canada geese you see. I've done that too as well. Uh, that one was a really surprise encounter. I was actually uh, watching warblers, yellow warblers that day uh, in those trees. And um, right beside me came this little family of uh, Canada geese right by McGuntico Falls. Um, our observations um, is more than seeing. Oftentimes we think of an observation as what we're seeing with our, you know, just with our eyes. But what I'd like to share with you is when we talk about observation and nature journaling, it's what we take in through our five senses, what we, you know, our sight, our smell, our taste, our touch, um, and our hearing. For example, um, the picture of the lupins um, right before you go into Owl's Head State Park, just about a week or so ago, uh, maybe a week and a half ago, they were at their peak. Right now they're kind of fading. And so I really wanted to capture those. And so um, that, that evening, it was kind of late. I didn't have my nature journaling um, things with me. Most of the time I carry it in the car, but I didn't. So what I did was I, you know, I took a, a, just a phone picture of it, and I know that later I'm gonna, you know, do a nature journal page of that. Um, also, too, you know, um, it's okay to touch if we're we're careful when we're in nature. I knew that it would be safe for me to take, uh, for example, to touch the um, spruce tips. These were just the new ones come out in the spring, and they were damp with dew. It had. Um, there had been a fog uh, that morning just before I got there. And I wanted to experience that. And I also too, um, what I was doing was I was comparing, um, you know, last year's growth to this year's growth. And you might want to nature journal that on the page. 
Um, the other picture of the cobblestones is that that's one of the things about the state of Maine that I absolutely love is our cobblestone beaches and the various colors. Um, often I have um, drawn and watercolored um, those types of, um, you know, just an inanimate object, but I find such beauty in it. But I love to hear them when they're rolling too, and I've written about that on the page. Here's a couple pages from my nature journals. Um, one of the things that I wanted to really focus in of uh, the um, nature journal page from Camden Harbor Park uh, was the uh, birch um, trees. And so I wanted to try to capture, you know, what the, what the shape of the leaves were, what the colors were. And so um, I spent some time just sitting on a blanket in the park and doing that. The other was um, the Camden Hills State Park, um, the upper uh, by uh, right on top of Mount Batty. Um, and so what I did was is that I just walked into the woods, um, you know, right on top of the mountain and, um, you know, on a path. And then I just sat down. I sat down by this little puddle and it was there from Hurricane, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna pronounce this right, it's D-O-R-I-A-N. And it had just uh, gone through the area and there was a lot of puddles that day. And I just decided to sit down and look around me and see what was, you know, what were the shapes of, um, you know, the types of things that was going on there. Um, you know, what types of um, vegetation was I seeing? Um, and I also was uh, able to um, identify a little beetle. And so I was thrilled with being able to do that. And so I wanted to get all of those things on the page. Now, if I was to go back there at a different time of year, um, you know, I'm, um, I'm sure the colors would be different. Um, that puddle might be dried up, um, you know, so those are little changes that we can take note of in the field. This is, um, I had shown you previously uh, the uh, image of me sitting on the dock at Toddy Pond. This is, uh, these are some of the pages that I did um, sitting there. So what I wanted to focus on was the sounds. There was the wind in the trees. There was the moaning of the ice, tinkling of the ice shifting. There was crows. There was the sound of a, a red-shouldered hawk. Um, also too, I noticed that there were tiny little bubbles um, around where the ice was starting to melt. And so I took note of that. I also, as I said previously, I wanted to capture the colors of that I was seeing on the pond and the ice that day. Also, when I was sitting there, I noticed that um, there was a pair of bald eagles that were um, adding to their nest. And I had watched them, um, I think it was a few years before that when I had been staying at this lake house. And so that was a lot of fun just watching them interact and as you can see um, I wrote a little story about it it's not not a lot of words but just enough for me personally to be able to remember that I had to look through my binoculars in order to see um, you know what the eagles were doing um, how they had their heads positioned um, again this was the very next day I guess after that other experience um, again, I noted the sounds. There was the drumming of a woodpecker, a crow cawing, chipmunks and squirrel chatter, blue jays were jeering. There was the tinkling and shifting of the ice, a nut hatch, wah, wah, wah. There was a duck quacking, wind through the trees, bird song um, of a sparrow and a bald eagle with a high pitch whistle. And that's when I knew that it was a bald, was a bald eagle was because I heard that whistle. And so um, I, you know, um, I sometimes draw little arrows to, to, to make my story on, on the Nature Journal page to kind of remind myself of certain things. Uh, this is just uh, one of the first pictures that I ever did um, as far as a Nature Journal page. And what intrigued me was the shape of the, the bleeding heart flower and the colors too as well. That's why I put the color uh, swatches up there at the top. Um, also, too, some of the things that you can take note of when you're in the field, tiny little things. Um, for example, um, you know, uh, those were acorns that were just starting to emerge that had fallen the fall before. And it was just right after um, the ground had be 
begun to um, thaw out from our winter. Uh, here was some, um, you know, um, pine cones that either, uh, there was a lot of wet red squirrels in this particular area that I had been staying at. And so, uh, you know, you can see um, it's leftovers after the, the winter thaw and uh, all gathered up there on a rock. Um, one of the um, important things to take into the field is binoculars. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've relied on my binoculars to, uh, especially to see birds, um, you know, maybe watch white-tailed deer, um, see coyotes, red fox, and, um, you know, even looking, uh, sitting, when I've been sitting on, um, along Penobscot Bay, looking out into the harbor, I have seen harbor seals. And so it's important to always have your, you know, your field glasses with you. Um, lots of times people take a magnifying glass. I haven't purchased one yet, something that I want to do. Um, so you can really look intently at things, you know, on that micro level and, you know, examine the parts of whatever that you're looking at. Oftentimes it's some type of vegetation flower that you want to use that magnifying glass for. Um, I take a, uh, my phone into the field. I don't rely on photos, but often I do take photos. And one of the reasons is, is that if I uh, get interrupted um, when I'm nature journaling, maybe because of the weather, uh, maybe uh, uh, there's too many black flies, or maybe it's a time constraint, I love to take photos and then come back to it. And this is uh, something that I had taken note of at Birch Point State Park. And so I wanted to capture it in my nature journal and write about it and then later did some research about that. So as we're beginning to wrap up, one of the things that you can ask yourself is what can I do with the information that I'm gathering? You know, what do you want to do? What do you want to look at? What do you want to focus on? So ask yourself why you're nature journaling. Uh, to participate in a scientific study to increase your own knowledge base about the natural world, uh, to provide a creative outlet, to engage in mindfulness or just, you know, relaxing in nature, uh, maybe just, you know, letting it all, all go, every, all of your worries, concerns, whatever. Uh, maybe you want to connect with nature. Maybe also you would like to partner with a nature conservation or preser uh, preservation nonprofit as part of their citizen science endeavor. And I have done all except for the first one. And um, I know that the Maine Birding Atlas, I have, um, you know, shared uh, bird sightings with them. Also with the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, I believe it was in 2012, um, that I was one of the um, individuals that had the first sighting um, of a sandhill crane um, in the area of Surrey. And so I was really thrilled. I called them. I also um, called the Maine Audubon, let them know. And then later it was confirmed to me, yes, um, it was uh, the Sandhill Cranes. So ask yourself, what can I do with the information that I'm gathering? Um, why are you nature journaling? What are you observing? What types of changes are you noticing season to season? Um, the weather related, uh, maybe those natural disasters that occur. So look for the little things, look for the larger scale things, take note in your nature journal. Some suggested nature journaling books and courses, keeping a nature journal, deepening your connections with the natural world around you by Claire Walker uh, Leslie. Uh, the nature, the Laws Guide to Nature Drawing and Journaling by John Muir Laws. I have all of these um, resources I have used. The Naturalist Notebook for Tracking Changes in the Natural World Around You by Nathaniel T. Wheelwright and uh, Bernd Heinrich. Um, also courses, as I had mentioned, the Cornell Lab uh, Bird Academy called Nature Journaling and Field Sketching with Liz Clayton Fuller. And that one is always open. It's still open today. Uh, then the University of Newcastle, um, Australia via edX. They have a natural history illustration course. Um, it's not always open, so you can check back in with them or maybe contact them to see when that might take place. So today, I'm, I'm uh, hopefully I was able to provide you with some um, 
um, ideas, uh, maybe to um, what types of changes you can um, see in nature and how to go about recording them. Thank you. And I'm going to just kind of end with um, some questions. And so these are two of my favorite pages from my nature journals uh, that I have done within the last year and a half. So. Great. Thank you, Lori. You're um, welcome. So I'm going to, if people do have questions and they want to type them in the chat, they can. Okay. Um, I did have um, one comment that someone said that you can get a microscope app for your phone that they find works very well, and it's called iMagnifier. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know about that. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, I have um, a couple of questions. Um, sure. What is... Do you find that you, as I age more and my memory goes a little wacko, do you find that you retain more information more by nature journaling? Absolutely. Um, and and that's, that's the way it is with any type of writing, even as an instructor. I tell my students, please take notes by hand, because when you write it down yourself and you see it, oftentimes you retain that information a lot better. Um, I know that my nature journaling has really increased my knowledge base um, as far as the types of birds, maybe their habitat, um, different types of insects that maybe I didn't even take note of before. But now when I see them in the field, I can go, oh, that's a so, you know, and I'm able to remember that. Mm. So it definitely does help to nature journal. Also too, I think that it helps you to remember the colors, like for example, um, you know, when I did the um, the pages, just I think it was the just last week or the week and a half ago, um, it was Skeeg Marsh, and I saw the killdeer. I had noticed that there was a yellow um, sort of a hue on the surface of the water, and what I came to realize what it was pollen, um, <laughs> and which really kind of surprised me. I mean, it shouldn't, but it was pollen where I know that in um, the um, fall, in autumn, that the marsh grasses turn um, a reddish color. So now that I have been nature journaling and I paint those in the field, oftentimes at Whiskey Marsh, I actually nature journal from the car um, because of the mosquitoes, because I sometimes go in the morning or just before dark. And so it helps me and I get the binoculars out and do it that way. Great, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. my, the other question I have, I guess I'm curious, do you incorporate your nature writing into your journaling and how do you do that if you do it? Yes, I do. Um, I didn't know whether to do that at first, but I found out or maybe just realized and just talking to enough other nature journalists that um, your nature journals are your own. Um, you don't even have to share them with anyone. And so I find that, and often I've been told that my style is, is even with these two illustrations that we can see right here, is that I nature journal prose all around my, my, my nature journal pages. And I find that uh, sometimes it's a story, sometimes it's the sound. Um, once in a while, it's the type of birds that I'm observing in that particular scene. Um, sometimes it's something new. Um, Recently, I started putting um, a poetry, uh, I'll put a quote. And so um, that's me making a connection with nature and just adding that little bit of creativity as well. Thank you. You're welcome.